Hello. In previous video, we have run some Gaussian calculations. We actually wanted to optimize the structure of the ETA. And now, in this video, we will take a look into the outcomes of this calculation. I will go for my test call folder. And now I just list the folder to see what uh, happens. And we see quite, uh, quite a f uh, few new files has been created. So let's get through them. One type of the files is the checkpoint file, which is uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, temp folder of the calculation. Then you have a few of the DQS files, which are files related to the submission system and to the queue system and submitting to the nodes, and they are not important much to us. And uh, then there is a log file for each calculation, which is the most important file for us at the moment. And we will take a look into these log files both from a text editor, Vim, and from graphical point of view, using more than. So let's start with Vim and with the first, first calculation. There is some header at the beginning of the file. It's more or less about the copyright and other things. Not much of importance to us. Then um, there is definition what we wanted to do. And uh, some definition of the initial geometry. And uh, other things. The important parts are in the middle and at the end of the file. So let's go first at the end. And what you see here is some uh, saying. And then uh, there is a message that there is a normal termination. This message is important because otherwise uh, when there is some error it tells you that it did not terminate it normally, most of the case. Then you see lot of gibberish numbers, which is actually a sum up of the calculation outcome. And that's the part of the file which is important just to see that it ended up as you wanted to see, as you, you wanted to have it ended. Then uh, next thing which is important is the convergence process. At the beginning, we have started with the optimization. So the optimization goes through iterative process where it just takes a first guess, uh, first our structure, and then it slowly converts for better and better structure and check if it's going the right direction. This process actually is checking by comparing the value, the force and displacement to the threshold value, which you can set on the loosen or tighten. Um, so you are, you ended up very close to the minima. So as you see at the beginning, nothing converged. Our initial guess was probably not uh, exactly the structure which we want to have. And then over the time it starts to converge and then it converges in like four steps, which means quite quick optimization. Here it even states optimization completed and stationary point found. Next, it uh, describes the structure of this stationary point and it ends up with this kind of gibberish once more and it tells you normal term termination and after that, it continues with the frequency calculation. So here, what we will see from this point on is the outcome of the frequency calculation. So at the beginning, once more definition of the structure, not much of an importance. And uh, then starts the important part. The most important is the first frequency because it tells us where we are on the potential energy surface. We know that we are at the stationary point but we don't know how the stationary point looks like. If the frequency is positive, the first frequency, then we know that we are in the minima. We can't say if it's a global or local minima, but it's definitely a minima. If we, it would be negative, then we are at the maxima, which means that we are at some transition, that we are uh, looking at transitional state structure. We will get to it later. So this is one important outcome of the frequency calculation. Other frequencies are not important if you are not uh, check if you are not comparing to some other vibrational spectra. Next important outcome are the energies because uh, from vibrational calculation you can obtain zero point energy. You can obtain thermal enthalpy, which is enthalpy, and you can also obtain thermal and free energy, which is the Gibbs energy for the structure which you have drawn. 
these can be quite handy in some uh, at some point. Definitely they are important if you are just studying theoretically some reaction and you want to see the potential energy surface of this reaction, then you will go for these values. Okay, so that's it. Now let's go for the graphical point of view. Let's take a look for the same file, but not with Vim, but in this case with more than. So what you see here is a structure uh, of the ethane, the converged ethane. When you take a look on geometric convergence, you see that it converges really fast. If you want to see what actually happened during the calculation process, let's go for one, one second for each structure. Let's go for this first point and go with a movie. And you see that only thing which happened was that the CC distance changed. Other parameters probably changed too, but definitely not, uh, not very, there was definitely no intense change. So let's take a look for the Z matrix. What you see here is the CC distance and it's 1.53 at the last step, 1.45 at the first step. So that's the only thing which more or less happened. Or you can also see, uh, you can also check on the frequencies by clicking here. And here is a table of frequencies. Here, this is the first frequency. I will just speed it up a bit. And it's this uh, rotation of uh, the metal groups to each other. And if you would like to see it more intense, then you can just go for a bigger scaling factor. So that's it. That's the calculation e 10 c one Now let's take, have a look at the calculation of e 10 c 2 Just open it in more than. Let's go for the movie. Also just a subtle change of the CC uh, distance, but the structure does not look as the previous. Here we see that the metal groups are in syn periplanar configuration, not uh, not anti periplanar and we can also see that the first frequency is imaginary, that it's negative frequency, and that means that we are not uh, on the ground state, but we are on stationary point of the potential energy surface. Uh, why the calculation ended up here is because it's actually also a stable point, because uh, when you take a look on the perspective uh, of the potential energy surface, you can take an analogy and you can imagine that you have a big rounded stone and it can just sit as a duck somewhere in the bottom between hills and then it's on a stationary point and you won't move it but you can also take this uh, rounded rock and you can push it up to the hill and put it exactly at the highest point of this hill and then it can't decide if it wants to go left or right or where and it just stays on that point and this is the story of this structure because we just started in a completely with a complete symmetry between two metal groups. The hydrogens are just behind each other and it can't decide if it wants to start to rotate one direction or other direction to go on the minima, to go off the hill of the potential energy surface. So it just stayed there. And did not move at all. So this is the ETN C2. When we take a look uh, in them, it looks quite similar. At the, at the end, you see that it's normal termination. You see that uh, it converged, the optimization was completed, station rate point was found. The important change is that the first frequency is negative. And the second thing, which is different is the energy. When we compare it to the C1, C1 is on the right side, C2, the transition state is on the left side, we see that the zero point energy, thermal enthalpy and therm all of these energies, they are, high, they are higher in case of the transition state than in case of the ground state of this uh, structure. To compare it, we can just 
around Python. The difference is, let's take the last line. So here is 7.5.4 is 7.5.8. So dot 7.5.4 minus, minus dot 7.5.8. And this is a constant which uh, I multiplied to convert it from hard tree to kilojoules per mole, more or less. And we see that the difference is 10 kilojoules per mole which means that the ground state lies 10 kilojoules per mole lower than the transition state. This barrier means like nothing in case you would be at room temperature and this rotation of the metal groups uh, relative to each other is probably unrestricted. That's the knowledge we can extract from this point, uh, from these energies. And it also shows why these energies are important, because if you are running some potential energy surface scan of some reaction that you are just uh, shooting geometries and checking what is the energy, then this one guides you if the, the this uh, numbers gives you the answer if the mechanism which you are looking on which you are looking is feasible or not, if you are running the right calculations. So let's have a look at the C3, once more just for more than. And this is the geometry which I started almost same as C2, but I break the symmetry between the metal groups, so it should go for the it should go for the ground structure. It should not uh, end up as a transitional state because we are not exactly at the top of the hill, so it should just fall off to find some minima. So let's prolong this interval and let's run a movie. And we see that's exactly what happened. We can also check it on the geometry convergence. It took much longer path. In previous cases, it was just five steps. Now it took 15 steps to go to get optimized. So it's better to start with a structure which is near to the ground state or transitional state which you want to study because otherwise it will take a long time. But definitely it paid off to break the symmetry because otherwise we were looking for the ground state and we ended up in a transition state. This did not happen in this case because we broke the symmetry. When we look for the vibration, we see that the first vibration is positive, not negative, and it's the same vibration as the case of the first molecule. So let's compare also from a Wim point of view the first molecule and the third molecule. So at this side this is the first molecule and this side this is the third molecule. They should be more or less the same, except that they uh, started from a different geometry. But the end seem quite same, so let's have a look if it's the same from the point of view of energy. And when we take a look at zero, zero point energy, we see difference of 8 and the last digit, which is virtually nothing. Just to show it up, it's 0.000008. Multiply by 2625, which is 0 0.02 kilojoules per mole, which is within the error of the calculation which we are doing. So it's the same structure. If you don't believe me, you can also check it from all them. Uh, sorry. So let's go for the last structure. Let's go for the Zmat, and you see this distance is 1.53526 in case of the C3, and now for the C1. Ah, this is the starting point. Let's go for the last point. 1.534, so the difference is really negligible. That's it for today. We have seen how to uh, check on the calculation if they exited normally if everything worked fine, how to check if you are in the ground state and not in the transition point, or you are in the transition point and not in the ground state, how to compare the molecules. And in the next video, I will show you how to fail the calculation, what you should avoid actually, if you want to uh, finish your job without an error. And uh, in the next videos, I will also try to focus a bit more on how to use Vim the text editor which I'm using, so you can use it uh, 
because it's not friendly for the beginners but I think it's quite useful if you st get used to it then it can really speed up your interpretation process so thanks for watching I hope you have really learned something useful for you and see you next time